Good afternoon, good evening, good morning to you, and uh, thank you for joining me today here as I present uh, Open VDS, More Value, Less Cost. My name is Andy James, and I'm the Chief Product Officer at Blueware. The intent of this session is to talk around um, seismic data, moving data to the cloud, and cloud native uh, formats of Open VDS. So it's, a, it's really an informative session that will give you an idea and, and hopefully provoke some thoughts around how we can move things forward. As I was doing some research for this, I found this wonderful picture of the digital subsurface reality. And it's probably uh, really difficult to say, but this probably is true. And maybe this is an oil and gas data center where a lot of that data is locked away in vaults somewhere, in tapes or storage archives somewhere. And um, it's really difficult to use. So when experts are thinking about digital digitalization of subsurface data, and this is the problem they're faced with, it becomes very challenging. When I think about digitalization, there's really two aspects to it. Is the data accessible and is the data usable? Companies are thinking about the cloud, the cloud because it presents options for cheap storage, but does it make the data usable as well? And so those are two aspects that I really want to talk about during this presentation. One of the big problems that companies face is seismic data. And essentially seismic data is big. Many oil and gas companies are dealing with petabytes of data and 85% of their subsurface data is occupied by seismic data. So the challenge becomes um, very difficult and there, there are ways of moving data to the cloud that we can use to overcome this challenge. There are service companies out there that enable us to liberate that data from tape. But decisions we need to think about are, how do we store it? How do we use that data? How much will it cost? So the data ingestion service companies will extract all the metadata for it and provide information, but they really don't necessarily deal with the trace data. That still has to resort to, do I archive it? Do I move it into um, different storage tiers in the cloud? And the key element around this, the key decision is focused around cloud costs. So you may have heard that storage is cheap in the cloud, and it essentially is. The cloud companies like Facebook that are um, using the cloud to store petabytes of image data that you can access back through 10 years or so, they, they're able to do this and store massive amounts of data because of the, the way that the cloud can scale. Um, but it's a lot more complex than that when you start to analyze uh, how to compare the costs. So what I wanted to do here is dig into some of the data. What you're seeing here is uh, different types of storage tiers within the cloud. When you start looking at the cloud, you'll notice that there's different, um, different types of storage tiers. Now, all of this information is accessible. You can go to uh, the web browser and just do a quick search for um, either Azure um, Storage calcul uh, Cost Calculator or AWS Cost Calculator. And I essentially use this information to provide this. What we're seeing in this table is uh, different storage tiers where you can have um, object store. And I'll talk a little bit about object store in a little while, but it's a type of format for storing data in the cloud. And there's different types of object store here. You've got hot, you've got cool, and you've got cold objects. And these represent online data, um, short-term archive or long-term archive. And they obviously come with different costs associated with, to, to them. Um, if you want online data, it's more exp expensive. And the data set here is a uh, half a petabyte of data. So that's about $10,000 a month versus the archive, which is about $500 a month. 
But if you scale this up to 100 petabytes, you're looking at $24 million a year versus $1.2 million a year. And for file storage, if you choose to use traditional style file storage, which is accessible through uh, a normal file browser, this is $31,000 a month or $73 million a year. So this is huge when you start thinking about it. And so this is because seismic data is so large. So this is comparing some of the different cost tiers. So what you end up concluding here is archive is the way to go. But does archive really meet your digital digitalization goals? Sure, you've liberated that data from tapes and you moved it into the cloud. But the data is essentially unusable. You have to restore the data in order to be able to use it. Well, maybe that's not so bad. Restoring a data in the cloud, re restoring data in the cloud is much easier than getting something from a warehouse, loading it onto a tape, bringing it onto a, a NAS device so that you can make it accessible. Um, but there's further implications here. And you have to understand the cost of retrieving data. So this um, table here just looks at those three tiers of hot, cold, uh, cool and cold. Now the cost on the second column is the cost to store that same half a petabyte of data in the cloud for a month. Now you start putting the cost to retrieve the data and you see that it's almost an invert of the cost to store. So your hot data is always online, right? so it doesn't cost anything to restore. Your cool data, which is very easy to bring online, costs $5,000 um, to retrieve. And then your cold data, which maybe takes 24 hours or so to bring back online, costs the equivalent of storing the data online for a month. So you need to be cautious of if you're going to bring that data online every month, it soon becomes uh, more cost effective to keep it online. So in this next chart, I compare the different cloud storage tiers of how many times a year do you bring that data online? So that's represented by the X axis and the, the Y axis here is the cost of bringing it online. So using the hot, basically it's online all the time, 12 months of the year, and so that's a flat line. Now, if you bring the, the cold data online six times a year, it suddenly becomes more expensive than um, bringing the hot data online. Whereas the, uh, the yellow line here, which is the cool, is not much um, less, there's not many savings if you start bringing it online for six months. There is some, but is the price of is the savings you're getting worth keeping it in that core tier? You may just as well keep it in, in the hot tier the whole time. So this really um, gives you some things to think about when you're looking at bringing the data online. But the problem is the elephant in the room and the elephants are the oil and gas and the modern seismic surveys, those single large objects and having to move big pieces of data around. If I have to bring half a petabyte of data from cold storage to hot storage, that single transaction becomes very expensive. Now let's talk a little bit about cloud technologies. The primary form of storage in the cloud is object store. It's elastic. It can be um, expanded and contracted very easily. So if you're thinking about building a huge data center internally as an organization, that's very limited. You have to define how big it is um, before you start. And it's very expensive to add data to it the cloud becomes elastic for you and it gives you unlimited growth. You can grow on demand, you can contract on demand. It's also highly distributed as well. You can replicate the data in different data centers. It becomes very cost effective. Um, it's very resilient because of the nature of the architecture. 
and it's also very secure by nature as well. So what actually is object store? Well, it's essentially data is stored in small pieces. And if you're thinking about seismic data as one big object, it becomes very difficult to manage. And this is where OpenVDS um, plays a part. And OpenVDS is a cloud native way to store data, seismic data in the cloud. And the data is broken over small pieces and distributed throughout the object store. This also means that any part of the data can be accessed instantly from anywhere. You don't have to be at the start of the data or the end of the data or load the whole data set into memory before you can access it. And so it really uses the approach that the cloud has of small bytes and small objects. OpenVDS is, has been endorsed by the OSDU, the Open Subsurface Data Universe, as the pr preferred cloud storage format for seismic trace data. And OpenVDS is an open source format that is available under the Apache 2 license. So that means that the, the file definition is available to anyone and there's no lock in um, into a proprietary format with OpenVDS. It was contributed um, to the OSDU uh, just over two years ago by Blueware and actually forms part of the R2 release of OSDU, which is um, almost coming to conclusion at this point. Some of the capabilities of uh, OSDU um, compared to SegY, which is a linear tape based format, um, OpenVDS provides very fast access to any part of the data. It's essentially the, the individual objects are broken throughout the overall uh, object store, which allows you to uh, really make use of the cloud technology. It's serverless, which means API access to the objects can be defined. Once again, giving you that random access capability. And it also supports any type of uh, seismic data type, including uh, pre-stack data as well. So it's, it really is a robust format um, that's um, modern in architecture, modern in design, that support any seismic workloads. So let's talk about where it plays a part in the cloud. If you think about a, a, a large seismic survey and bringing that data online and moving that data into archive, you're taking big things. The large, uh, the large things are represented as single objects. And this becomes very uh, limiting because a single object transaction, such as reading, copying, archiving or retrieving is done at that full size, big object level. The way this is handled in comparison to a segway being a single object where the whole blob needs to be copied to a file system in order to be able to use it, um, OpenVDS being that cloud native for, format spreads the data throughout multiple objects within an object container. And then a virtual rendition, a virtual format of that data can be accessed through APIs. So if you're only looking at one inline, one cross line or a small subset of data, that just those objects can be pulled via APIs and streamed into workflows as opposed to copying the whole file. And it really kind of give, lends that, uh, that approach to bring the workload to the data as opposed to the data constantly to the workflow, which is in our um, current application patterns. So taking this a little bit further, the anatomy of the OpenVDS stores, um, stores the metadata, all the exidic headers and various different metadata about the file separately from the actual trace data. So the trace headers can be stored um, separately as well. So this does lend the, the concept where you can put the hot tier having metadata and trace headers, just as an example, and the, the, um, the trace data, which is large, potentially in archive, and just bringing those, those uh, traces back as needed as well, because you can just bring certain objects back. So there's lots of potential around um, OpenVDS for doing 
uh, new ways of working. This leads the way for uh, enabling new workflows. Uh, it provides the opportunity for you to lift and shift um, applications in the cloud. Right before this call, I was looking at um, uh, some remote desktop kind of technology that will give GPU acceleration new life in the cloud and make um, 3D 